This video looks at some of the main types of renewable generation in Great Britain, namely onshore and offshore wind, as well as solar generation. Onshore wind turbines tend to have three blades, also called propellers. When the wind blows, the blades spin on a rotor, which in turn spins a generator, creating electricity. The electricity travels down through the large shaft and down into the ground, where it is connected to the electricity network. White Lee Wind Farm, located in Scotland and owned by Scottish Power, is the largest onshore wind farm in the UK at 539 megawatts, able to provide power to 300,000 homes. The majority of onshore wind farms have been built using subsidies most notably Renewable Obligation Certificates, i.e. ROCs. ROCs are awarded to wind farms when they generate electricity. They provide developers with an invaluable source of income, with each megawatt hour awarded a certificate, which values at roughly £50 per megawatt hour. Suppliers of electricity must ensure that they have enough ROCs to comply with their obligations, with generators of rocks able to trade with suppliers to ensure that they meet their quota. Offshore wind works in a similar fashion to onshore wind. The most obvious difference is the location. Offshore wind farms are generally able to produce more electricity than the same sized onshore sites as the wind at sea is not restricted by mountains or buildings. The majority of offshore wind farms have been built directly on top of the seabed and are generally built in relatively shallow water, circa 40 to 60 metres deep. The electricity is passed down the shaft of the turbine and through to undersea cables which export the electricity to land. There are now operational floating offshore wind farms which can be positioned in areas of the sea far deeper than 40 to 60 metres and are able to utilise stronger winds found in the deeper parts of the sea. Instead of the shaft leading straight down to the seabed, the shaft is supported by some form of buoyancy structure which itself is moored to the seabed. In Great Britain, offshore wind farms have been funded in part by government-backed subsidies. The CFD, Contracts for Difference, auction allows developers to bid into an auction with the lowest price projects awarded a contract. Developers bid in at a price, pound per megawatt hour, that they would be willing to sell the output from their wind farm back to the government. When the project is then built and becomes operational, this auction price is marked against outturn wholesale price. In this way, the revenue is capped for the wind farm developer at the auction price that they bid in for. If the wholesale price outturns greater than the auction price, then the developer will pay the government the difference between the two prices. Developers are also protected against price risk. If the wholesale price drops significantly, they will still receive their auction price as the difference between the two prices will be made up by the government. In terms of solar generation, solar panels create electricity by using the sun's rays and converting this to usable electricity via photovoltaic cells. The photovoltaic cells are surrounded by semiconducting materials. When sunlight hits the materials, an electric field is created by the photons provided by the sunlight, which triggers the move of electrons from the semiconducting material. Onshore and offshore wind are actually a form of solar generation. It is the heat caused by the sun's rays that causes the air to rise and fall, creating wind and then electricity. Thank you for watching our video. 
You can also find links to our training courses in the description below. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel.